Hello, welcome people. In this video, we want to cover Giardia lamblia. So, you know what Giardia lamblia is? <clears throat> it's a parasite. It's actually a protozoa. That is, it's a, it's coming under the kingdom Protista. So, basically, Giardia lamblia is a protozoa. It's uh, coming under the kingdom Protista. It is a flagellate protozoa. So, it has flagella as you can see here. What else you should know? It is, um, um, that's all right. So it lives in the duodenum and jejunum. That is in the small intestine it lives. <clears throat> and it has flagella. Actually, it is the only protozoa parasite found in the lumen of small intestine, it seems. In the lumen of small intestine, this is the only parasite that is found, it seems. Protozoan parasite, that also. Oh, protozoan parasite. Okay. So other parasites can be there. Okay. Fine. So this is the uh, Giardia lamblia. Uh, this is how it looks. The way we have drawn it, actually. So this is Giardia lamblia it has a lot of flagella, right? Four pairs of flagella. This is the front view. This is the lateral view. Like it's looking like a fish eating something, right? It's the lateral view. These are actually the sucking discs, suckling, suckling discs. They actually adhere to the small intestine with this. This is the cyst of Giardia lamblia. So here you have the trophozoite form and the cyst. Okay. So basically we are uh, done with the introduction of Giardia lamblia. Let's move on now. Giardia lamblia history actually it was first observed by uh, Anthony von Lee Wenhock, that is uh, a Dutch, uh, he's a Dutch scientist. He saw this Giardia in his own stools, it seems. That means he had Giardia cysts. Interesting. Okay, so uh, this is actually the most common protozoan pathogen they are seeing. So then what else? Um, it is found more in tropics and subtropic areas. That was the history. Now the morphology. Let's go into the details of this uh, Giardia lamblia morphology. Right. So basically there are two forms, the trophozoid form and the uh, cyst form. So here you can see this. these are the trophozoid forms. This is the frontal view and this is the lateral view and this is the cyst. Okay. So basically look at the details about the trophozoid. The trophozoid is the vegetative form. It is a vegetative form. It is tennis racket shaped or heart shaped. Okay. Some people are saying pear shaped, what and all they are saying. So many shapes. People are like telling hundreds of shapes they are telling for this. Okay. Then it is uh, anteriorly you can see it is kind of round and posteriorly it is kind of uh, pointed. So it is a tennis racket shape they are saying. And it has suckling disc. You can see these are the suckling discs. This is the suckling disc by which it attaches to the intestinal mucosa. There is uh, There are four pairs of flagella, one pair here, one pair here, one pair here and one pair here. So totally four pairs of flagella and Giardia lamblia. They all arise from something called as blepharoplast it seems, blepharoplast. If you want you can remember that word. Then there is an axostyle, they are saying two pairs of axostyle are here. There is one axostyle here, that they are saying, sorry there is one pair of axostyle, that means there are two axostyles they are saying. So there are two axostyles here, can you see? Shall we zoom a little? Hold on. So there are two axostyles they say staying. There are uh, one pair of axostyles. Then there are parabasal bodies. Can you see? These are the parabasal bodies or the medial bodies. These one, these two here, you can see circle, circle. They are the parabasal bodies or the median bodies. And they have motility. These are mot flagellated uh, intestinal uh, uh, protozoa. They are flagellated intestinal protozoa. So obviously they are, uh, what did I say? They have motility because they are flagellated. They have motility which is like falling leaf, something like this, falling leaf. You know how a leaf when it falls, it turns, turns, turns and falls. When you look at the uh, Giardia in the microscope in the stools, they'll be turning, 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 turning like the leaf, okay. It's kind of interesting. You watch some other YouTube video for this. It's really interesting, okay. Uh, to see the motility of uh, these organisms in stool, be it Giardia, be it uh, Strongylites, Turcularalis, be it any other uh, parasite, you know, movement when you see. Whether bacteria also, if you see movement, motile bacteria, where you see it's kind of, it gives you goosebumps. So Giardia is one of them which gives you goosebumps. It will show you falling leaf uh, motility, okay. Then, <clears throat> coming to the cyst. Cyst is this one, guys. This is the cyst. Uh, the cyst is actually ellipsoid. You can see it is ellipsoid. Actually, it is the infective form. It is the infective form, guys. The cyst is the infective form. There are two pair of nuclei. That means totally four nuclei are there. You can see four nuclei and axostyle is there. There's an axostyle there. In this they have labeled it as axoneme. Okay, so this was the morphology of uh, Giardia lamblia. Okay, morphology of Giardia lamblia is now over. Okay, so now uh, do you think it's fine for us to move on to <clears throat> uh, move on within uh, this thing? 
that is giardia lamblia what are we studying giardia lamblia shall we move on what is the next thing we have to study the life cycle okay so life cycle actually man is the single host okay man is the only host for giardia the infective form is the mature cyst and uh, the infective dose is just like 10 cysts if they take they will become infective okay so let us look at the life cycle now i'll try to explain everything in this diagram only okay now man man is here see the mode of transmission uh, for giardia he got uh, he ate contaminated food water sometimes sexually in male homosexuals it can transmit sexually and some people are extremely susceptible to this giardiasis example people who have blood group a okay i don't have blood group a so obviously i am not susceptible that much to giardiasis and uh, people who have blood group a are quite susceptible and uh, people who have chronic pancreatitis people who have immune defects they obviously people who have immune defects will be prone to so many diseases that's kind of not required to write i felt okay if they have immune defects they are susceptible if they have malnutrition they are susceptible okay all that okay so man mode of infection you saw contaminated food and water so what is he ingesting the uh, this mature cyst is the infective form so this is the mature cyst it has four nuclei so uh, now he uh, consumed this now it will go where it will go to his small intestine correct so now the po whole uh, point is it has to go to the small intestine now in the small intestine what happens this is the small intestine you can see that there is excitation that the cyst is coming out of this uh, shell okay whatever the egg shell or whatever shell you call it it's coming out of the shell the cyst shell sorry it is coming out of it and one cyst gives two trophozoites this is very unique right you never heard of something like this one cyst is giving two trophozoites that is the only thing speciality in giardia Yeah, that's right. In Giardia lamblia, this unique thing is there where one cyst gives two trophozoites. Okay, so continuing with the life cycle, guys. Here we are in the uh, we now in the small intestine. What happens in the duodenum? Excitation happened. One cyst will give two trophozoites of Giardia lamblia. Trophozoite is the vegetative form. Now, one trophozoite. What happens? It becomes two trophozoites. How? By longitudinal binary fission. See, this is longitudinal binary fission. By longitudinal binary fission. One trophozoite multiply into two, like the, the binary fission. Okay, longitudinal binary fission. This is a very unique thing again. Longitudinal binary fission. Now these trophozoites they have suckling discs, correct? So they can adhere to the duodenal mucosa. They are sticking to the small intestine. Then what happens? These trophozoites sometimes they are released to the lumen and they travel to the large intestine. In the large intestine, in this time they become cysts, and these cysts are passed in the feces. that's all easy right and then again this entire sequence of infection continues life cycle of giardia over now shall we move on okay pathogenicity pathogenicity uh, and clinical features that's what we wanted to look at this here pathogenicity and clinical features so basically what happens uh, it is going to be in the lumen right so it does not invade the tissue but it will stick to the intestinal epithelium by suckling disc so what and all can happen the villi of the intestine can be affected the architecture of the villi can be affected the the villi cells can undergo apoptosis there can be increased lymphatic infiltration so a lot of lymph uh, lymph will come here into the intestine you can see okay then what happens there is a variant specific surface protein vssp the surface protein is going to help in the virulence of this uh, giardia then <coughs> uh this is often asymptomatic sometimes for all of these almost you will say it is asymptomatic but in uh, if symptomatic cases what will happen there will be mucus diarrhea a lot of mucus diarrhea will be there so mucus diarrhea guys pay attention here here we are mucus diarrhea diarrhea is the main thing you have to mention okay in giardia lamblia if you don't mention diarrhea the no marks diarrhea word should be there there will be fat malabsorption so the stools can contain lot of fat and offensive odor so this is steatorrhea right steatorrhea will be there dull epigastric pain so abdominal pain will be there flatulence that means gas will be there lot of gas okay so let us mark all this neatly so what and all you should not forget you know mucus diarrhea giardia may lead to mucus diarrhea fat malabsorption dull epigastric pain and flatulence in this diarrhea is so important and the uh, diarrhea you should not at all forget okay <clears throat> the stool will contain excess mucus and fat but no blood it will not have blood remember it contains mucus and fat fat we told you steatorrhea this is going to be the stools are going to be offensive in odor 
malabsorption will occur uh, in that person because he cannot the villus uh, architecture is lost right so he will have malabsorption he will not absorb fat he cannot absorb vitamin a proteins sugar so basically he will become malnourished also there will be a lot of weight loss right weight loss will be there in this person now what will happen this uh, giardia lamblia not just the small intestine and then the large intestine it can also affect the gall bladder okay it can affect the gall bladder so when once it affects the gall bladder there can be biliary colic and jaundice so there could be biliary colic and jaundice jaundice can be there in this person because <clears throat> it is going to colonize the gall bladder it can colonize the gall bladder and it can cause jaundice gall bladder will write in green because it's green green na huh? jaundice we have to actually put yellow the incubation period is around 2 weeks if you can remember that that's fine so we are done now with what the pathogenicity and clinical features of giardia so we are done with what now what are we looking at today giardia lamblia that is a protozoa which is having flagella it is intestinal the habitat is the intestine the small intestine especially and uh, in the small intestine it will exist in the large intestine it will encyst right the infective form is the cyst <clears throat> remember it will not invade it will stay in the lumen it will adhere to the intestine now how do you do lab diagnosis of giardia so stool examination so stool examination you can detect uh, what and all first of all you should see that multiple specimens you will need if you want to examine the cyst if you need cyst you need to examine you may need multiple specimens of the stool so you will use concentration techniques for the stool like uh, formal ether zinc acetate so you can use concentration techniques these are very standard things that you will write for stool examination the stool will have offensive odor and it will be fat containing this you know right because there is steatorrhea fat malabsorption is there microscopic examination you will see the cysts cysts only cysts if they are there no that time it's an asymptomatic carrier and uh, you can use saline and iodine wet mount preparations to observe these cysts similarly for trophozoites also you can use these uh, saline and uh, gymsa stain and iodine uh, you can use okay iodine also you can use Now there's something called as entero test or string test. Okay, you should know these two words: entero test or string test. So this is expensive and not actually recommended, but this is kind of an interesting thing that you can know for Giardia lamblia. Or uh, what they will do is they will this this kind of a capsule, this the curled thread with a gelatinous capsule at the end, which is acting like a weight. They will give this, and okay, what they will do? They will attach this thread, which is free end, to the cheek. Actually, it's a longer thread. So let us say this is a long thread, and uh, here there is a gelatinous capsule. Okay, this they will attach it to this man's cheek. Okay, and he will swallow this uh, gelatin capsule. It will move, 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 go through the uh, stomach, and then reach the duodenum. After two hours, what they will do? They will withdraw this thread. So this gelatin capsule also will come up. Then what they will do? They will place this thing in the saline, and they will centrifuge the saline. So they will take saline and they will uh, keep this in the saline, and then they will centrifuge this saline. Whatever deposit they get, that deposit they will observe for giardia. Did you understand? So basically, this is a uh, technique to obtain the duodenal specimen. They are going to use a coiled thread with gelatin capsule weight. they attach the free end to the cheek the person is swallowing the capsule then the capsule passes through the stomach and to the duodenum after 2 hours they will withdraw the thread and they will place this in the saline then they will centrifuge the saline and examine the deposit in the gr of the they will try to examine the deposit for giardia so this is an expensive but it and not recommended test okay but it's kind of an interesting thing moving on in lab diagnosis of giardia lamblia we are now we will move on to the sero diagnosis where you can detect the antigen or the antibody so in uh, uh, sero diagnosis you have antigen detection antibody detection standard you know this and whenever you write this you will write elisa that is also standard for you so enzyme linked immunosorbent assay is commercially kits are available for detecting the giardia specific antigen gsa but they have written as gas 65 gas 65 is the antigen if you want you can write this to get some marks gas 65 is the antigen that you can detect what and all other other things you can use indirect immunofluorescence uh, in immunochromatographic strip etc these are using monoclonal antibodies so you will detect the antigen by with, by using monoclonal antibodies so you will have the antibodies known antibodies you will have you will put and you will try to detect the antigen and you will uh, uh, if there is antigen presence then it indicates active infection okay and you can use this usually for epidemiology antibody detection again you can use same thing indirect immunofluorescence elisa standard things these are this antibody detection they are saying you cannot uh, in this case differentiate whether it is a recent infection or past infection 
Moving on in lab diagnosis itself, you have molecular methods, PCR, DNA probe, etc. These are going to be highly uh, specific, right? Because they are going to the DNA level, DNA probe, PCR, etc. Guys, okay, so that was about the uh, lab diagnosis of Giardia lamblia. Now we will just conclude it with some treatment, okay? So what treatment you will give these people? Same thing, metronidazole, tinidazole, very standard treatment that we write for parasitic infestation, metronidazole, tinidazole. For protozoa, we always say this, no, metronidazole, tinidazole. Whenever there are helminths, we will say what? Albendazole, uh, mebendazole, etc. So here in protozoa, you always write metronidazole, tinidazole. For if the person is pregnant, you can give uh, parmomycin, okay, which is an oral aminoglycoside. You can give parmomycin, okay. Profile access, that means prevention. How will you prevent? Uh, by maintaining hygiene. Okay. So we are done with uh, Giardia lamblia. So this is uh, Giardia lamblia trophozoid. Recap, we saw what it is. It is a flagellate protozoa. It lives in the duodenum jejunum. So it is an intestinal flagellate protozoa. It is uh, found in the lumen. <clears throat> this is the trophozoid form. This is the front view. This is the lateral view. Uh, did you take a close look at it? <clears throat> this is the front view and the, this is the lateral view. So there are four pairs of flagella, two nuclei in the trophozoid, two median, um, what is this called as, uh, basal body, para basal body or median body. Then this is uh, two axo styles will be there, two axo styles. Then this is the suckling disc, you can see this is the nucleus, in the center there is a central karyosome. Okay, and then you can see this is the cyst. The cyst has a thick wall as you can see here. The cyst has a thick wall. It has an axoneme and it has four nuclei. If it is mature, it will have four nuclei, the cyst of Giardia lamblia. So then let's move on. Then we saw the history. Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, he found these things in the his own stool actually. He uh, discovered microscope, correct? Morphology of uh, Giardia lamblia we have explained in detail. It is tennis racket shaped, etc. They have the falling leaf motility. Remember that life cycle we saw. Man gets infected by contaminated food, uh, uh, homosexuality, etc. Some people are extra susceptible if they have blood group A. So if you have blood group A, you are extra susceptible to giardiasis. Now in the small intestine what happens, it will get existed, that will come out of the cyst and one cyst will give two trophozoites. Trophozoites will longitudinally divide in uh, longitudinal binary fission and they will multiply. These cysts then they will adhere to, uh, sorry, these trophozoites will adhere to the uh, small intestine with all that uh, suckling disc. Some of them will be in the lumen and they will move to the large intestine where they will become cyst again and they will be passed in the feces. Okay, that's all in the life cycle. Life cycle they will ask in the exam so that you can draw all these trophozoite and cyst and all. So they are very happy they can understand morphology also. So that's why they will ask life cycle. Then clinical features you should not forget uh, diarrhea. And remember they only adhere to the small intestine and cause villi disruption. They are not going to invade and uh, uh, they, well, the diarrhea, whatever diarrhea is there, uh, there will be mucus in it and a lot of fat, so it will be having very offensive odor. These people will have a lot of malabsorption of protein, sugar, vitamin A, etc. So they will be having weight loss, they are malnourished. They can, sometimes these giardia can go to the gallbladder. Actually they said here it will not invade, so I don't know how it reached the gallbladder. But it will reach the gallbladder and it can cause biliary colic and jaundice. Okay, some surface antigen gives the virulence for this uh, giardia lamblia. Lab diagnosis, uh, typical lab diagnosis is lab, uh, stool examination. You will see the trophozoites and the cyst. If there are only cysts, it can be an asymptomatic carrier. The stool will be having offensive odor with fat. Okay, So you can use some concentration techniques or you can take multiple specimens of the stool and you can use concentration techniques. Okay, So you need multiple specimens and you can use concentration techniques to concentrate the stool. You will use saline mount, wet mount, etc. String test or entero test is uh, to reach the duodenum and get some duodenal specimen. We have explained this in detail to you already. Then 
Sero diagnosis in sero diagnosis you will do antigen detection, antibody detection, and antigen detection. You will use ELISA. You will detect this GAS 65 antigen. You can use uh, indirect immunofluorescence, immunochromatographic strip, etc. You will use monoclonal antibodies to detect the antigens. If there is uh, antigen, it means to say that there is an active infection. Okay, and this is usually used to, uh, for epidemiological studies. Antibody detection again you will use ELISA indirect immunofluorescence. But this cannot distinguish between uh, recent or past infection. That's what the textbook says. So that is what we are exactly saying. Then moving on. Molecular methods, DNA probe, these are highly, highly specific because you are going to the DNA level. The treatment of GRDSS is metronidazole, tinidazole. They seem to like tinidazole more than metronidazole for GRDSS. Okay. If the person is pregnant, you can give parmomycin. Okay, which is an oral aminoglycoside. Prevention is better than cure. So just hygiene can prevent a lot of GRDSs. Okay. So guys, there you go. GRDA lamblia over. So, so much we have studied now. So you take a break, relax and come back for the next video. Okay. Bye-bye.